I do not have a new computer. This is my old Sony Vio laptop. It's a Pentium-ish machine intended to run Windows XP with half a gig of RAM and a 40 gigabyte spinning disk. I've had this for years. I can't even remember where I got it now. But recently it's been sitting on a shelf due to having broken down. It's suffering from two problems. One is that the CD drive has failed and it'll only read uh, the inside tracks of the disk. And given that it's USB is too primitive to boot off, this is a bit of a problem. The other is that it's been randomly shutting down and the amount of time it's been spending actually running has been getting smaller and smaller until recently it's only been able to power up for a few seconds and then turn off again. Of course, now that it's been sitting on a shelf for six months, when I tried it again just now, it worked absolutely fine. But I believe that what's wrong with it is that the thermal paste connecting the CPU to the heatsink has dried out and gone brittle. So it's not making proper thermal contact which means that the machine is overheating and powering off to save itself. So I am going to try and repair it. This is actually the second attempt at this video. The first one, I spent ages trying to figure out how to dismantle it and eventually did so up to a point. The point was when I discovered that in order to get to the CD drive, which is it's backwards, which is here, you have to go down through the top and remove the motherboard, which is insane. It's a bit like having to remove somebody's brain in order to fill one of their teeth. I was originally thought that you could go in from this side and lift the back off, but no, you can't. So I did a bit of research and I found some, not instructions, but schematics showing where all the bits fasten together, which is about as good as I'm going to get. So, well, I have some thermal paste and a replacement CD drive that appears to be branded Lenovo and has a different shape front panel, so I don't even know whether it will fit. But the only way I will find this out is to actually get down to the drive bay and give it a go. So that is what I'm going to do today. So anyway... First step, take the battery out which is a ancient lithium ion thing that hasn't held a charge for a decade. And I do need to make it absolutely clear that this is not a tutorial video. I know how to do some of this, but when we reach a certain point, it's going to be exploratory surgery. So anyway, first step is to remove the keyboard. To do this, you undo one screw as you find the schematic, this screw, B1, which holds the keyboard on. And it's a long one. At which point we can open it up and we push the keyboard to the left and it should just Try not to, it should just lift out, or trying not to actually break it. And it is fastened to the motherboard by this ribbon connector, and it's got one of these tension bars, so we flip the bar up, and the cable just lifts out. And, oops, that was a control key, I wanted that. But anyway, you can now see how the keyboard works. It's rubber dome with some nasty thin stabilizers. It's not a great keyboard. There we go. So I'll just chuck that aside. 
and this shows the user serviceable bits at the top, which in, is the RAM in this case. This machine reports 250, uh, sorry, 512 megabytes of RAM, which is a decent amount for a machine of this age. Uh, if I had discovered how to do this when I ordered the CD drive, I would have bought another uh, memory module. So now we go down to the bottom and we're going to remove this hatch. This is the service bay for the hard drive. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't actually show us anything else that's useful, but we have to take this off anyway. It's a very weird combination of easy to maintain, uh, easy to service, in that you can actually take all the bits off and there's nothing glued down, well, except for one bit, which I'll demonstrate later. And completely maddening. Right, that's the other long screw. Okay. And it just lifts off. Exposing. Here is the hard drive. Uh, here is where the CPU is. This is the heatsink. Uh, it's got a uh, thermally conductive pipe, a heat pipe, that's what they're called, which connects the CPU to the cooling system. This is the radiator and this fan blows through it. Uh, so this is one of the bits I'm going to be taking off and repasting. But I can't do that until I can take the board out because actually I might be able to you know I thought this was all one piece but it's not it's just stuck down okay well we have to we have to penetrate down this far in order to get at the CD drive which is here so let's remove the hard drive we do with these screws. Just those two. And then the caddy lifts off and unplugs from here. So that also goes aside. And this reveals not very much but we have to get that off in order to take the motherboard out. So the next thing, this is where it starts getting a little bit unknown, is to remove all the screws that are helpfully labeled with these arrows, indicating that they're fixing points. Oh yes, this is the bay, uh, bay connector for the docking station, which I haven't found. This machine actually has a decent number of ports. So on this side, we've got USB, PCMCIA, Firewire, uh, microphone and headphone, VGA. And on this side, we've got another USB, uh, modem and Ethernet and a memory stick pro slot for anyone who remembers that so it's actually quite well specced for an XP grade laptop uh, I'm actually planning on putting FreeBSD on it for use as a very low-end build box you know making sure that my programs actually work on FreeBSD uh, if I could get it fully upgraded RAM wise, then it would be really quite nice. So it also has a layout, a shape, that means that you can't actually tell what, the, what is the front and the back. Anyway, so 
Uh, we are next going to want to remove this panel. This is connected to the motherboard in various ways. One of which is this connector, which is another tension bar. So lift the bar and pull the thing. There's these two, which are even cruder than that. You pull the blue tab, which wedges the ribbon in, and it just lifts out. And this one, which is the power connector, so we remove the screw, this is for the, the ground wire, well, earth really. And I need to find my favorite pair of corner nose pliers, which I always have out because I use them so much, which means they're never where they are supposed to be. Uh, yes, they were hiding under where I put the keyboard. Okay, so now we want to remove this, which is the power connector. Preferably without breaking it, there we go. Uh, that connects to this barrel connector here. Okay, uh, I'm trying to remember what happens next. I think now is the point where we start spudging. Because there's a lot of little plastic clips that hold it up. Uh, hold the top on. this bit. Uh, I'm sorry, this is hopefully see out of focus because it's so close to the camera. But the knob that holds the PCMCA card, the eject, the eject knob for the PCMCA card actually stops the top coming off. Have I forgotten a screw? I th think I have forgotten a screw. This one. Which I believe... Uh, no, that wasn't in fact it. Let's put that back in again. Okay, let's try prying the top off. So I've managed to unclip it around here and it's dropped back again, it's clipped back on. Um, there we go. So right, something is holding it on. Yes, when you move the lid like that and you have your finger in there, it literally traps your finger. It does feel like something is binding it down here. So I know it's not that screw, and I know it's not that screw. And I'm pretty sure it's not that screw. It's a long one or a short one? It's a short one. The long ones go all the way through and connect to the top shell. The small, the short ones just hold bits of the motherboard together. And you can see that there's at least three different levels. This, this, this. Uh, but there's also uh, 
more modules which are visible from the other side once I finally manage to get the top off. And naturally, there we go. So what is holding this down? There's a thing in there. And yes, this the barrel connector for the power is attached to the top and needs to unclip in a, like that. Okay, so it's only attached in one place now, which is in the middle. Ah! Right. Uh, I can't demonstrate because I can't close the lid at the moment, but there is another screw, not there, in this hole, which holds the top on. Right, that screw. And hopefully that was the last one. And off comes the top shell. Right, all except for, come on, the modem clip opens. Right, and it is free. All except for this which holds the, well, which connects up to the, uh, the speaker. There is only one speaker. Uh, no, I tell a lie, there's another speaker up here. But I'm not sure. Yeah, that's connected up via, th via this which also feeds the three LEDs here. Now, I do not know how to get this off. I don't even know if it's a socket or a plug. Or whether the wires just push into a friction fit thing. It does look like a plug of some kind. All right, it just pushes on. Fantastic. Right, we've taken the lid off. Um, so on this side, let's get that on camera, you can see the touchpad mechanism and its buttons down here, uh, LEDs for the power and Wi-Fi lights. Interestingly, the Wi-Fi switch is here, but there doesn't actually appear to be a switch behind it, which is interesting. Uh, over here, we've got the memory stick reader and its wire 
speakers here and here. Here's the little PCB with which connects to the other speaker and has the LEDs on it. And we don't need any of that. And this is where I got to last time I tried this. So we can see here is the Wi-Fi card, which is a PCIe, PCIe thing. This, I don't know what it is. It, some mysterious daughter board. This is the backup battery, which doesn't appear to have leaked. I'm not really a fan of these, but it's glued quite firmly onto the motherboard. Uh, this is part of the cooling mechanism. In order to get that off, I probably have to remove this metal bracket. Here's the PCMCIA slot. This is the bottom of where the CPU is. So here we have all the power conditioner caps for the CPU itself. Uh, and this metal frame is what bolts it to the motherboard. So we're probably going to have to remove that. Sorry, what am I saying? Not to remove that. We don't want to remove that, but we do want to unscrew the heat sink from it on the other side. We do want to leave the CPU on the board. So here is the schematic for the board. So here is the PCIe. Oh yes, here's the antenna cable which goes up into the hinge mechanism and it'll be up the top of the screen. Uh, the actual screen cable I think is this and connects to the motherboard here. And there's the battery connector. Yes. Uh, so I think... So I think that I do not need to remove the motherboard in order to remove the he heat sink. Because I think I can get at that from the other side. But the CD drive is under here. And it is fastened in with some side-on screws. There's one just in there. But there's another one about here as well. Uh, so these two screws, it goes like this. And this plastic bit sticking out, I'm really not sure whether there's room. If I turn it over, it goes here. So uh, we'll see once I manage to get the CD drive out. Uh, there's also a screw here. Let's line that up in there, but I don't know whether it's actually done up or not. I can see the two end-on screws. Uh, one from the other, this one from the other side, this one is in there. You might be able to see it shining. So, So I was thinking that I might be able to remove the heat sink uh, and that would give access to the screw that was in here 
And this screw, I might be able to get access to this way somehow. But it's behind this plastic thing. And I'm just peering down the PCMSA slot. I can't see it in there. It's ridiculous that you have to remove the motherboard to get at it, because it's a replaceable moving part. OK, well, assuming that I am actually going to have to take the blasted uh, motherboard out, See, yeah, see, here's the hinge. And laptop hinges have to take a lot of force, so they're pretty solid. And it is fastened to the plastic shell, which now I think about it, I don't think it is plastic, I think it's. It might be uh, titanium or aluminium. Yes, apparently it's metal. I found no instructions on how to do this other than those schematics, which aren't very helpful. Okay, well, anyway, let's start with the PCMCA slot, because this is sitting on top of the motherboard, so this is probably a good bet. PCMCA slots are increasingly rare but they're actually quite valuable for certain machines. So I really want to have a Linux machine or a BSD machine that's capable of accessing them. For example, memory cards for like my NT200 are PCMCIA. Uh, does that slide out like Like that. And this bit should then lift off. Oh. It's fastened down by this metal piece, which again has a Oh mm, dear. Yeah, I am not sure. Okay, it's this screw. You can see the arrow here. I was worried it was actually pointing in the other direction, was at a screw that I didn't have access to. Wow, I really hope this thing will still work once I'm done with it. Okay. So, we could unplug this, but I, I'm not going to, because I'm not terribly happy about putting those screws back in again. Do so you want to get under here? Okay, well, they have thoughtfully marked the mount points. So I'm assuming that if I take all these out, it should lift. What's this?
interesting. This is a screw from the other side. Under here somewhere where it's completely inaccessible. Here's the front bezel with the uh, switches and things on it. So you can take that off by undoing this screw. We are going to have to do that at some point. That screw is seized. Uh, yes, because this is screwed to the chassis, I am going to have to remove it and unplug it from the motherboard, which is this. So let's just do that. Like so. This is one of these tension bars. taped down. Right. It slides into the connector and then the tension bar pushes in and locks the cable in place. Okay. There is some more tape we're going to have to remove at some point. There is another of these. Oh, interesting. The CD drive is not coming with it when I pull this. So what is holding it down here? I think these screws, just a quick look at the bottom. I think it's now these, so let's remove them and see what happens. Certainly feeling flimsier. Need to find a way to remagnetize my screwdriver. That hasn't done a lot, I have to say. Well, there are a couple of screws here marked with arrows, so No, this is a daughter board. This isn't attached to the motherboard, except via the cables. That's another daughter board. Let's take a look at that schematic.
it's not very easy to follow, I have to say. So here are the the mounting screws. This metal plate is this, fastened down, it says, by three B6s, which are these. What is the bottom of this fastened to? There is something between that daughter board and the PCB, which is probably hmm, interesting. I don't know what that's fastened to, but let's take the mouse and see what happens. Luckily, most of the screws are the same. Oh, and I completely forgot about this one as well. The seized one, that's not going to help. Okay, I need the big screwdriver. Which I don't like using in this small stuff because it provides way too much torque. And, uh, yep. Not putting that screw back in again. Okay, now what happens when we lift? It's still fastened solidly down, okay. Well, that's not coming off at all. Oh, there it is. Uh, the tape's not helping. So what's underneath it? RF stuff? Yeah. Uh, and there are some metal standoffs which connect to the daughter board below. Uh, this one is mobile. That one is part of the fan. And this one just connects to the... Um, the heat sink, uh, the, uh, the CPU mount there. So I actually want to put that one back on again. Because I don't want that standoff to go, to go astray. So I want to fasten this down here, which is connected to the bottom of the motherboard. So this isn't actually locking it onto anything other than the motherboard, which is what we want. If I can make it go in, that is.
Hmm. There we go. And here, to connect it to the standoff. to fasten this one on as well. Um, I believe that it, as it's connected to the fan, which we're going to leave in place, yes, let's put that one back. Okay. Okay, so this should now... Uh, that does feel floppier than it was. Uh, Less floppy than it was, anyway. But there is something fastening it down over here. Uh, I don't believe there's a screw under the RAM, but let's just pop this off to check. Nope, there isn't. Well, there aren't any screws accessible here. So, I wonder where to go next. I've removed all of these except for these four holding the, he the heat sink on. We are going to have to remove those eventually. See, it's not connected there anymore. But there's something over here. There aren't any holes under these stickers, are there? No. There's a single screw here which appears to be connecting a couple of bits of chassis together. But I don't think that's particularly relevant. Is there anything under the PCIe card? No. This Having this as a card, by the way, is really useful because if this machine ever becomes defunct, can rip it out and use it in another machine. Okay, let's take a look at this. So this piece 220 is this black piece of plastic. Here is the PCB, with a little notch there. Here's the heat spreader and radiator which is on the other side. Here's the top of the radiator. The multiple daughter boards. There's, uh, there are a few upside down screws.
I think I've got them. Oh, there's a screw in there that's holding the fan on. I'm not sure I want to try and take the screen connector off. There are no screws there. It doesn't feel like the fan is actually attached to the to the chassis yeah it's quite clear now looking more closely at it that this is the metal chassis and that the bottom case is attached to it see so here's the chassis but here's the plastic Uh, or is it? Oh, that's interesting. I think I was actually completely wrong. Uh, it's probably not in focus, but you can tell here. Here's the plastic of the case, and here's the thing I thought was the chassis. You see the light grey line. That could be metal-treated plastic, actually, for presumably RF shielding. Because the only place I really haven't looked is under the feet. I don't think there is anything there. I don't want to take those off, I'll never get them back on again. Under, that feels very solid. There's no flex at all because it's got this whopping great chunk of metal on the other side. I can't think of anything that is still fastening this thing onto the onto the case. Am I just not trying hard enough? See, this definitely feels like there's There's something here holding it down, but I have no access there, so how can there be? It 
So here is the bottom. So here is the uh, the CD drive, and you can see. Oh look, there is a screw going in there. Um, it's this way up. It doesn't appear to be a corresponding screw hole on this, but that B11 matches here. There is the switch panel, hard drive, bottom, uh, hatch. Here is the actual plastic base itself. So here's a screw, which I think is this one. Here's a screw, which I think is this one. There's a metal box on the other side that this is screwed down into, but that's coming out with the PCB. Here is the little empty box in the bottom of the case, which I think appears somewhere here. I'll just double check that. It's this thing. There's nothing in it. Oh, that's interesting. There is actually... Is that access to the inside? I am genuinely not sure. But I think the purpose of that box is to support the PCB under there. So that'll be about here. Here is the hole for the bottom hatch, this thing. And there's a standoff next to it there. Here's the siding hatch for the docking station adapter. Sorted bits and pieces for the battery mechanism. I think I am going to have to try and remove the heat spreader. Honestly, I was hoping to get the thing out of the case before doing this. I mean, I'm going to have to anyway, but 
This appears to be a part that Sony thought was user serviceable, otherwise it wouldn't be accessible from the quite big hatch. So this is the part that I think was causing the mysterious power offs. I think that the thermal paste is going to be dry and gunky. But it certainly wasn't stuck down very much. Ooh, there wasn't really any thermal paste. And that is indeed dry. Hmm. Okay. Well, that would be easy to fix. Yeah, look, I don't even have any thermal paste in my hands. And here is the CPU itself, a Intel. No other markings. Yeah, that heat paste is useless. So, what has that exposed? We've got one of the CD tray screws, but that won't really help because we don't have access to the other one, which is in there. You see that this metal bracket, the these four screws were holding the heat spreader on. These two screws were holding the, uh, the bracket to the PCB. That hasn't made anything else come loose. I can see a screw just in there, but I don't think that's part of the, I don't think that's holding anything to the chassis. The fan looks commendably clean, which is nice. I was wondering whether I'd have to blow fluff out of it. Oh boy. The fan is big and metal. If I... You see there's a screw there. That could be going through the PCB and into the chassis. So that's... That would be around here somewhere. There's nothing shown. Let's find the main board. Uh, it will be around here. There's nothing there. But let's try it anyway. Take it out all the way. Yeah, it made a huge difference.
This is the plastic grill that goes on the front of the radiator. This is being held in by the screen cable now. Okay, I am going to have to unplug the screen. I have a key remover here, which may work. Yes, that is working beautifully. Okay. We've now got the uh, the antenna cable in the way. So let's remove this tape. We're not going to be able to stick these back on. I don't have any Captan tape. I should order some. Okay, this is just copper tape. Okay, now does this want to come? To get this plastic guide out of the way. Okay, this cable is now in the way. So, uh, we can unplug it from either end, but this end is the easier access. It's coming. It is actually coming. Uh, I'll just remove the the front bezel for the CD drive just on clips. So. I think that the motherboard wants to be disconnected from the CD drive chassis, which would be this screw. Yes, it does. But there is still something holding it down. It could be the CD drive connector. go and this folds out of the way revealing the CD drive yeah the reason why it wasn't coming out is this stupid connector here uh, pushes in this way whereas we were pulling the board this way 
All right, now. <laughs> There's a right now it lifts out. Oh, that's interesting. Oh God. <laughs> I think that I could have just undone the appropriate screws, levered carefully in the right place, and the whole caddy would have removed, would have slid out. And I wouldn't have had to have done any of this nonsense. It'd be these two screws here, but there is nowhere to pull on this side not to get take the thing out through its slot. Okay, well, let's just... <laughs> now the whole thing is so back heavy. And let's just compare with this drive. You notice that these are not the same connector. You know what? I'm going to leave that for now because now I'm going to start reassembling it. Okay, so this cable plugs in here. And the tension bar does up. Okay, this plastic thing here is all hooked in the wrong place. So we plug that in. This thing over here is in the right place. I just need to do the screw up. wondering this is slightly bent I'm wondering if this was supposed to go inside this rail but no it doesn't come on go back in I have a lot of screws on my workbench and I would rather like to get most of them back into the laptop. I actually still have some screws left over from the test assembly I did the other day. Problem is this metal piece has bent slightly so it's not actually lined up anymore. It'll be fine once I get the screw in. Go. Alright. Fasten the PCMCA tray down. Oh, come on, stupid little screws. There we go. Odd little detail, there's a red splodge of ink right over the O of Sony. 
I have no idea what that means. And I do actually need to put this bit in first because this is supposed to tuck under the PCM CIA stuff. Before I do it, let's just root this back in. It's like Lego but with worse instructions. So what is this? Did this go in? Oh, yes, it was here. No, it wasn't. It was there. Okay. one holds this ground wire in place This one goes down here. here. Okay. I'm going to assume that these screws go in the obvious places. I've completely forgotten which ones go, went where, to be honest. Luckily they're mostly the same. Uh, there's a, uh, there are like three different lengths and oh. there it is. And a few different colors which I don't believe matters and two different threads there's a a small thread and a large thread, but it's mostly all the same.
Okay, now before I do anything else, where did that CD drive go? Right, there is one of the screws. It's this one and this one. If you take those two off, you can then simply push the CD drive out. And that explains why this connector in, goes in this way rather than down the way the, the other motherboard connectors went in. Speaking of motherboard connectors, there are actually a few that I believe have gone into place, but let's just tuck this out, put this back under the tape. Yeah, try and put it back under the tape. I think this is the only one that actually matters because we don't want that cable straying over the fan. But that's kind of a mess. It's also not very sticky. Okay, well, we'll call that done. All right. Here is the shell that goes over the top of the PCMCA card. And yes, I appear to have screwed this up. I need to take these two screws out again. Now is the bit where I have to try and remember the order in which I took it apart. Or rather, the order in which I should have taken it apart and then reassemble it in that order, not forgetting any pieces. Such as, for example, this piece, which is the USB thing that goes here. Uh, which covers up this. way up. Sorry for the focus. And just clips in place. Okay. What other bits are there? I think this metal shroud is the only one actually. That goes on here, which helps to hold these cables in place, like so. I'm going to assume that these are the little, the little screws. Yeah, I, I'm very puzzled as to what this case is actually made of. It's uh, very hard, dense. It's either a very hard, dense plastic or a very light metal. I think it predates the age when laptops were all made out of titanium and aircraft aluminium. So it might just be very good plastic, but these screws are tapped straight into whatever it is. And 
they're mostly going in beautifully. There we go. Okay. I think we need a screw here. That one is a short screw. Screw there. Yeah, I can feel it hit the bottom of its thread. You don't want to keep pushing when that happens. You never know what might be on the other side. So I had to take a break with my SD card filled up. Anyway, we're going to reattach this now. Uh, the here, by the way, is the wireless switch. And let me just double check because... Yeah, that goes here. And you see there is nothing behind it for the actual wireless switch. Uh, there is actually... So the top shell goes on like this. So the bar ends up like this. Yeah, I was just checking to see if the if there was a plastic piece from the switch that was sticking up to this PCB here. But there isn't. No, that thing is just a clip to hold the PCB in. So that means the Wi-Fi switch is actually a complete dummy. It doesn't do anything. Fascinating. Okay, well... So goes on here, that thing clips on, Hold the wire down like this, and if I remember correctly this was a small threaded screw. Do need to reattach the cable. So this, make sure the tension bar is released. This pushes in like this. Tension bar goes into place. Tape sticks down. That's fine. I actually quite like these connectors. In terms of nasty motherboard connectors, these are some of the least bad I've met. All right. What is next? What parts do we have on the desk? We've got the heat spreader and radiator, hard drive, battery, these go in last. We've got the two CD drives, the new one and the old one. I believe that I got myself a DVD recorder. Yes, I did. Whereas the old one is just a DVD ROM. Uh, we've got the bottom hatch, the keyboard. So I believe we've got all the bits. So now, Let's put the top back on. Okay, so this is going to go on here. What cables do we need to connect beforehand? None, I believe, provided they're all like looped through so I can get at them. I think I can just put this on now. I need to make sure that these pieces are Put it in the right place. There's a 
the flap that covers the modem and Ethernet port is just is attached by a nasty rubber hinge, so that just pushes into place. And this should clip down. Oh, yep, the PCMCIA thing is in the wrong place. Okay, and all those nasty little plastic clips that took me so long to take out go back in. Right, now we plug these back in. Start with this tiny little thing. This should just... push down here. Come on. Yep, okay, that wasn't so bad. Power cable plugs in. Uh, it seems to have quite a lot of screws left on the desk. Well, grounding cable. I'm not sure why there's a separate ground and uh, neutral wire. And that's the wrong screw. I need a short one. It screws into this standoff that I assume is connected to the ground plane of the PCB. And then these wires hook into these little plastic bits. To stop them flapping about under the keyboard. Come on, get in there. Okay. But I had a sudden panic moment. This is the connector for the keyboard. Okay, let's do this one, which is the memory stick. Uh, fold up the tension bar, push the connector in, Fold down and stick the tape down. Uh, this one huh, has actually fallen into precisely the right place all by itself. So all we do is we take the stiff piece of plastic and we wedge it in here, which locks the cable into place. And likewise here. Terrifyingly, these tiny little connectors and are, by modern standards, considered quite big. Okay. And this wants to go under that plastic thing. Okay. Keyboard. Here's the standoff that goes on here, and then the long screw from underneath folds up and uh, locks it in place. Again, the mylar strip drops into the connector 
and I fold down the tension bar. Uh, yeah, it doesn't go in very far, only about a millimeter. And then it just pushes down, clips into place, done. And it feels very flimsy because I haven't done any of the screws up. So let's start with the keyboard. Okay, and let's do some of these up. Some of these were, yeah, let's use the short ones for these. There's another short one for this one. of short ones so this one must be a medium and it's this screw and this screw that the CD drive connects to it's this way so it goes on like that. So we're going to drop the screw in there. That's feeling firmer already. Take that one out. Uh, the hatch goes on like this. Just looking for screws inside I need to do up. I think that's the lot. And put the hard drive back in. So the connector just pushes down. Hard drive sits like that. Uh, this screw is part of the hatch. So we need to do the others up. So my camera died halfway through applying the thermal paste, but that was okay because I screwed it up anyway. So let's just add a bit of paste. That looks grain of rice sized. Might still be too much actually, but well, we'll see. And then we insert the heat spreader and do the screws up. And I looked up the instructions on how to actually add this place and they said firmly apply constant pressure and you do the screws up in a cross pattern a few turns at a time so as to increase the pressure evenly. Okay. But it's really not at all difficult. And 
And they said, do not attempt to spread the paste yourself. Let the processor do it as you do the do up the, the screws, because that applies pressure constantly, and it means that the uh, the blob of thermal paste will expand evenly, and you won't get air bubbles. Okay. Well, that's that. So we can't put the hatch back on until we've done the CD drive. So let's take a look at the CD drive. Right. Here's the duff one. Here's the good one. Now there is a, a few mounting racks which we're going to have to take off and move over. So we undo the screws and we, there's also the PCB adapter in the back that we're also going to want to move over. These are the mounting rails which hold the CG drive into the bay. Okay, and this is the adapter. Oh, oh crap. Uh, uh, that ain't gonna work. They sent me the wrong drive. The So I got the drive on eBay and the seller s said that it was a drive for one of these and I was hoping that this was going to plug on to a SATA connection there but it doesn't. Let me just remove this and see what there is underneath. Is that focused? That is focused. Nothing. Well, at least we know it comes off. So I'm going to have to get in touch with them and say, Oi, you sent me the wrong drive. And the form factor's right, as you can see. It's just that connector that's not. Blast. Also, you notice that the... I'll just clip these back on. Oops. That's broken, never mind. Also, you notice that the front bezels are a different shape. Uh, this one's got a gap in it. I was hoping that I'd be able to swap the bezels over and hide the gap, because you see the drive itself has the gaps, but uh, the button's in the wrong place. The button and the LED are in the wrong place. Okay. Oh well. And I actually appear to have broken the bezel. Never mind. So this goes in here. Oh. I need to put the rails back on. So, this rail goes on here,
and this rail goes on here. And I'll put the whole thing back together and I'll try the FreeBSD boot DVD to see if it works. Uh, I suspect that it will boot but will then fail as it tries to load bits of the installer because unless it mysteriously comes back to life due to being on a shelf for six months the way the CPU did, then uh, it will it will hit the problem with the CD drive, which is the reason why I wanted to replace it. And there should be a screw there, but there isn't one. Which is interesting. Okay. Plugs into place. And the hatch goes on. And I think this is a long screw. No, it's not. Feel it hit something in the other side of the PCB. Oh, and I shouldn't put that screw in. With luck, I should not need to have to open this up again uh, if I want to replace the CD drive when I get one that works. I just need to remove these two screws. Now, where did the long one go? I think it was... here. That's... It's not quite right, actually. If you look here, the hole's not centered. the long one. That's too short. So I think this was the other long screw. Yeah, most of this video is going to be me putting in and taking out screws. Okay, and this one. And this one. And 
this one. And... Uh, <laughs> oh, there are actually more screws. screws. So it looks like my camera suddenly cut out. Uh, I think I need an USD card, but we're about to give it a try. Uh, I can't see the screen at this angle, but hopefully you will. So I've plugged in my VGA monitor. It's on my desk. So we give it some power and power. Well, it starts. And it is in fact booting MS-DOS from the CD in the drive. So we know it works. Let's give the, I will actually uh, reboot it into the, uh, the BIOS and uh, make the screen bigger. Uh, and I will grab the FreeBSD disk. Okay, one FreeBSD. DVDR, and actually, you, you can't see the CD drive from where you are, which is here. Uh, also, remember I said the wireless LAN switch was a dummy? Watch this. I have no idea how that works. There did actually seem to be no switch on the other side. Anyway, save and exit. and wait for the slow boot. Yep, and it's failed. So it's enough of the drive is working to have loaded the bootloader, but then it has failed to load the kernel because that's somewhere else on the disk. The DOS CD works fine, because the data is all in the center of the disk. In fact, can you make out the... Yeah, just about looking at the viewfinder, you can see the gap there where the data is. So I'm gonna to have to contact the eBay seller and tell them that their drive doesn't work. Uh, but luckily I have some video of the connectors. So, but I have managed to take this thing apart all the way down to removing the motherboard. It was mostly a waste of time, but now I know how this works inside. And if anyone else needs to do the same thing, then they can do that. And if anyone wants to find out what one of these looks like without taking their own apart. So it's not completely wasted. I just wonder how many hours of video this is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and please let me know what you think in the comments.